episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games and more people to see themselves in the games they play? Over the past couple of weeks, I've been playing through a recently released indie game called Ickenfell. It's out now on PC, Switch, PS4 and Xbox One, and it's a pixel art top-down RPG all about magic school. You play as the one kid in the family that never got magic powers, and one summer your sister just doesn't come home from wizard school, and you go and investigate, and when you get there you get magic powers, and that's a bit strange. All sorts of mystery to unfold. Ickenfell is a really charming little game, and I'm very glad I gave it a chance. It's not without its problems, um, particularly toward the end of the game. Enemies feel like they have a bit too much health, and fights take a bit longer than they should, but overall I've had a really fun time playing it. It's, it's one of those unique little games that I'm really glad I gave the time of day. However, perhaps most interesting about Ickenfell is the fact that it has a really wonderful selection of accessibility features, and a really interesting diverse cast of LGBTQIA plus characters. So today we're going to talk about Ickenfell, we're going to talk about what it gets right with its accessibility settings, we're going to talk about what it gets right with regards to its LGBTQIA plus cast, and the couple of little areas where the game has maybe slipped up that I think you should be aware of going in. So let's start by talking about Ickenfell's accessibility settings. A few months back on Accessibility, we published an episode all about epilepsy and how the condition relates to video games. Link down in the description. In that episode, we talked about the fact that it's important for video games to try and reduce common photosensitivity triggers where possible, but to not label those options as epilepsy safe modes. Ickenfell features a menu setting titled Photosensitive Mode that doesn't label itself as inherently safe to play, and is clear in its setting description that while the game will try to reduce flashing lights and effects, it may not catch them all. It's a mode that's there to try and help those who suffer due to photosensitivity, but it doesn't overpromise its results, which is important given the wide range of possible photosensitivity triggers that exist. Beyond that, Ickenfell features an optional content warnings mode. When active, the game will periodically pop up on-screen text prompts before scenes which may be difficult for players, depending on their specific experiences. The content warning system in Ickenfell is pretty robust, offering specific and detailed warnings that cover a wide and thoughtful range of topics, from scenes containing blood, to scenes where a character is struggling with deep self-loathing, I was pretty consistently impressed by how well thought through the content warning system in the game was. As a disclaimer, I have previously worked with a member of staff on the game who worked on the content warning system, so bear that in mind with my praise for this particular setting. Ickenfell features a combat system which is part turn-based RPG and part turn-based tactics game, with players moving around a grid-based arena to line up attacks, which they then select from a menu. Similar to games like Paper Mario, Ickenfell features as part of its battle system a timing system, where players can deal more damage to enemies, or take less damage from enemy attacks, if they time a button press as the attack lands. If, like me, you have difficulty with timing and rhythm, Ickenfell offers a variety of options which gradually reduce the importance of timing in combat. You can semi-automate timings, so you'll never get the worst possible rating on an attack, or completely turn the system off, always getting the best possible timing. In addition, Ickenfell gives players the option to back out of attacks if they realise that they have positioned themselves incorrectly. The game also allows players to turn off screen shaking effects and turn on auto run while outside of battle, which are all really nice quality of life settings that act as helpful accessibility features. Lastly, if you ever find a particular battle is a roadblock for you in the game, there's an option in the settings that will allow you to have a victory button on your turn based combat screen. At any time, you can click that button to kill all enemies on screen, gain any experience they would usually drop from being defeated, and end the battle. If a boss fight has multiple forms, the button will defeat the current form and skip you forward to the next phase of the fight. This can be really useful if there's a fight you're struggling to complete, or if you're just trying to grind up some quick levels to be better prepared for a fight you're actually stuck on. 
Overall, I was really pleased with Ickenfell's accessibility settings. I think that they walked the line really well. Uh, I really appreciate the content warning system, I appreciate how thorough it was and how it included warnings for things that I think a lot of games wouldn't have thought about including content warnings for. I really appreciate that the game has a setting in mind for people like me that have coordination difficulties and struggle with timing based minigames. I'm really glad that the game had a photosensitivity mode that took into account people's needs with photosensitivity without overselling the level of safety it would require, that it sort of hedged its bets on its language and was clear that it's going to try and make things better but you shouldn't rely on this to definitely not cause problems. And I really appreciate the inclusion of the game's victory button and the fact that I never felt like I was losing out for using it or that I'd done something wrong by using it. I think on the whole, they did a really good job with this game's accessibility. However, it's no secret that I am trans and very, very gay, and with that in mind, I think it's important we talk about Ikenvel in regards to its LGBTQIA representation. I think there is a lot this game gets right in that regard, but also there are some oversights that weren't in the game at launch and have had to be patched, and that patch has taken a while, and I think it's important we talk about those things just so you're aware of them. Throughout the course of Ikenvel's plot, the player meets three different non-binary characters who are all playable party members and major parts of the game's plot. Perhaps the most notable part of the game's non-binary representation is the fact that all three characters use differing pronouns from each other, rather than the game defaulting to using they, them for all non-binary characters. The party's initial healer, Nell, uses they, them pronouns. The party's booksmart magic user, Rook, uses he, him pronouns. And the party's paint magic wielding conjurer, Ima, uses Z, Zir, Neo pronouns. For all three characters, their non-binary status is not made a big deal. They simply use the pronouns they happen to use, and the game gets on with its primary plot. I will however note, and this is a real shame, that at the time of writing this script, a little over a week after Ickenfeld's release, some issues with the game's non-binary characters exist in some versions of the game. They are known issues to the developer, and a patch has been submitted to fix them, but playing on Switch, that patch is not live yet. The dialogue which would have confirmed to the player that Rook is a non-binary character simply doesn't trigger in the pre-patch version of the game, and there is a late game moment where Nell is misgendered in a sentence. It's not a deliberate attempt to have a character misgender Nell in the story, it is simply a moment of developer oversight. I understand human error happens, but it's really disappointing when a game messes up its own representation in this kind of way. Missing the dialogue that confirms a non-binary character exists, and misgendering another, is a really bad look, as is the fact that the game's developer also messed up Nell's pronouns in a tweet to me over the weekend, making the same mistake that was made in that one line of game dialogue. While I think all of these non-binary characters are wonderful and unique and charming, I think it's important to be aware of these issues going in. These things are being fixed, but maybe just be aware of them. Beyond that, Ikenfell features numerous characters shown to be same gender attracted. We don't get definitive confirmation on most characters' specific orientations, but multiple characters are shown to be happily romantically involved in relationships with characters they share a gender with. One playable character, Gilda, is very open and upfront about the fact she's gay, and makes no secret of her crush on the main character, Marit. While I have seen some critique of Gilda claiming that she's too upfront about her sexual orientation, I personally feel like seeing a cute girl and just turning to my group of mostly gay friends to tell them how gay I'm feeling in that moment is a very realistic representation of my own experience with my sexuality. Additionally, while some may criticise Ikenfell as unrealistic for featuring a playable cast of near-exclusively LGBTQIA characters, as a gay trans woman, the game's cast all grouping together feels natural. When you're LGBTQIA+, you tend to flock towards other people like yourself. There's safety in numbers, and shared lived experiences are often a starting point for friendships. As someone who is near exclusively friends with other LGBTQIA people, this very much checks out. Having now finished playing Ikenfell, I think that the game 
really managed what it was setting out to do. It's been a really tiring few weeks as a trans person having continual conversations about that one other magic school game that's coming out next year that has the turf attached to it and is very explicitly not in favour of trans and non-binary people. It was really nice to just play a charming, sweet little indie game about a magic school that felt explicitly LGBTQIA plus friendly. I didn't know how much I needed that until I started playing. If you're a fan of the recently released animated Disney show Owl House, then I think you're going to find a lot to love in the tone and the energy of how Ickenfell is put together. It is a very similar feeling story. Um, it is light-hearted, it's charming, it's dark and serious in places, but it always feels like there is some hope at the other end, and I needed a game like this. It's a really lovely little game that is well worth checking out. It Can Fell Overall does a really good job with its accessibility settings. It, it does a very solid job, and I think for the most part it really nails what it's trying to do in terms of LGBTQIA plus representation. It's a real shame there's those couple of missteps, and they're going to be fixed in a patch, which by the time you see this video that patch may be live on, on all systems. It isn't available on Switch, the platform I played on at the time I record this video, but I think if you keep in mind those little bits of warning and those little things that slip through the net, I think there is a very recommendable game here that is well worth checking out.